Hey everyone, it's Kelsey here and it's time for the Noble Pages Book Club. This past time we read Leaving Time by Jodi Pukul and um, I really, really enjoyed this book. Just wanted to start off by saying that. Um, I've had some problems with some of her recent books where I didn't really love them, but this one was a huge hit in my book. I just absolutely 100% loved this book. Um, so I'm really excited to discuss it with you guys. And I will link up below in the description section to Paige's blog because she'll have half the questions and I'll have half the questions just like always. And make sure to stay tuned until the end because I will be announcing the next date and the next book, which I'm super excited about. So, first question. Did you like the science and biology aspect of the book and how it related to the elephant world and the human world? Uh, especially concerning the mothers and their children. So, um, back and forth throughout the book, you hear from Alice, the mom, a lot. And you hear a lot of science and biology and just how the elephants interact with each other and how they act with their young and how they interact with the um, humans and their mourning process and grieving process. And I thought it was all really, really interesting. And I loved the way she, the author, tied it back to like humans and elephants how elephants mourn and grieve and let go of the dead and how humans um, kind of hang on to the past a little bit more. And I also liked a lot of the science about mothering um, and how that applied to um, the human, like human mothers versus elephant mothers. I just thought it was a really interesting aspect of the book, not just to compare elephants so much, but you did learn a lot of little scientific and like biological facts, which I thought was really interesting. And I really liked that aspect of the book because I felt like it didn't take over the book. Okay. The next question did before the ending, because obviously the ending had a big twist um, but before the ending, did you like the psychic aspect in the book? Do you believe in psychics in real life? Um, I personally, I do believe in psychics, um, but not all psychics. I do believe that there are things that we don't understand. There are connections and communications that we just don't understand. And I'm not saying that that's necessarily ghosts or... God or um, the future telling us things or aliens telling us things. I don't know what any of it is. I'm not trying to explain it and I'm not trying to say, yes, this person is communicating with the dead. But I do believe in like, I don't want to say psychic, but I do believe in like un unexplained phenomena. I do think that there are things communicating with us that we don't really know what's going on. Maybe it's science. Maybe, like I said, it's the future. Maybe it's religious. Maybe it is the dead communicating with psychics. But I do believe that certain people are more sensitive to that than others. So that's kind of the long and short of my answer. But as far as the psychic aspect in the book, I really loved it. Um, I guess because I do kind of believe in that. Like, I'm a little bit of a doubter, I'll admit. But for the most part, I do believe in it. So before the ending, which um, obviously makes you really believe, um, I did like that aspect of the book. Whoops, my page just dropped. <laughs> um, but yeah, I did really like that aspect of the book. And I thought it relayed a lot of information um, that you might not have got otherwise. So I, I did really like that aspect. Okay. And then the last question is kind of two questions in one. So Alice's research says that in the wild, a mother and daughter elephant will stay together until one of them dies. How does this tie into the rest of the book? Um, well, first off, I read part of the acknowledgments and Jodi Pukul actually wrote that she hopes this happens with her and her mother and her and her daughter. Um, so I thought that was really sweet and really special. But I think it definitely ties into the rest of the book as far as even though, and this is a big spoiler alert, if you have not finished the book, do not listen to the rest of this video. In fact, I've already probably spoiled a little bit. Um, but anyway, I think Jenna stays with Alice throughout the entire book, not just because of the 
psychic and ghost aspect at the end of the book, but she stays with her in her mind, in her memory. So even though physically they're not together, which is the way it is in the wild, I definitely think um, that we as humans, like we carry the people with us and that um, people do stay close together if they choose that. But I do think it's interesting that in the wild, mothers and daughters, like they're not, the elephants in the book aren't getting into spats and fights and running away from home or anything like that. Like the elephant bond is so much stronger. And is that because they're above all of that? Or is it because they're more simplistic and they're, there's just no reason for a young female to go off on her own. She just stays with the herd and stays with her mother. But, um, yeah, I just thought that was a really interesting um, fact about the mothers and daughter elephants in the book. Uh, so the kind of part two of this question is that there is a quote about if you think about someone you've loved and lost, you are already with them. How does this apply to Alice? And I kind of already answered that. Um, but I think it applies to Alice just because if she's thinking of Jenna and she's remembering Jenna and she's um, loving Jenna, even though she knew that Jenna was not with her anymore. I believe that she is with her daughter. It's not the same thing as going out to lunch with your mother or, um, you know, going out shopping with your daughter. It's, it's not the same thing, but honestly, the thing that keeps us around, and especially since this is, um, kind of a scrapbooking thing too, for me, it's a legacy. Like the only thing you're leaving someone is their memories of you, whether that's, you know, they remember coming to your house or there's photographs taken of you or stories handed down from generation to generation or, you know, a painting or um, like a family Bible. That's the only thing that's left of us. And so I think it is important that you you make those memories and that you have those special bonds and those special relationships so that whenever you are thinking of someone that's passed, whether it's your mother or your spouse or your grandparents um, or a child, that they are with you because you are thinking of them. And that's, that's all that's left of them is your memory of them. And if you don't keep that alive, then they're literally lost to history. Um, so that kind of went on an offshoot, but, um, that's kind of my answer to that question about if you think about someone you've loved and lost, you're already with them. So I know it's not the same thing, but it, it keeps them with you. So that is all the questions that I have for leaving time by Joda Pagool. So, um, make sure to head over to Paige's blog. Like I said, I will link that up so that you guys can go check that out. But um, I'm also going to announce the next book. So the next time that we will be discussing a book is February 7th, which is a little over two months away, two months and one day away. Um, so that gives you plenty of time. One reason we extended it this time was A, because of the holidays, you know, no rush to read a book. But also the book that we chose does not even come out until I believe it's December 30th. And the book that we chose is The Rosie Effect. Yes, this is the sequel to The Rosie Project that we read a couple of months ago. We really liked it. Both of us liked it. Um, a lot of um, you guys really liked it. So um, when we found out the sequel was coming out in December, um, we knew that we had to choose this book. So I am super excited to read it. Um, I think it'll be really interesting. It There is like a pregnancy aspect in the new book with Dawn and Rosie. So I cannot wait to read that book. But like I said, that isn't coming out until December 30th. Um, so you don't even have to think about reading a book until after Christmas is over. That can be your New Year's treat to yourself. Buy the book and <laughs> read it in the new year. So I will see you guys again on February 7th. And I will personally probably be back with some more book reviews in between them. But as far as the discussion and partnering up with Paige and the Noble Pages Book Club, February 7th, 2015. Yeah, it's already going to be in the new year. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I can't wait to see you again soon. Have a great day, guys.